y'all got it. Come on, say, my hallelujah. From the bottom of your heart, lift your voice. My hallelujah. Simply say, you deserve it. Real simple, say it, church. From the bottom of your heart, tell the Lord, you deserve it, Lord. Now say, all by the glory. Everything I give you, Lord. Everything I owe you, Lord, it belongs to you. All of the glory 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 belongs Everybody lift your hands right here and say, You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. From the bottom of my heart, Lord, I say, Let's hold it up and let's declare our faith in the word of God. Let's shout together. The Bible is, Bible is the holy word of God. Word. I, am I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. As a faith believer, I can do all things through Christ that anoints me and gives me strength. As I apply God's word to my life, I am 
phenomenally blessed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got to begin to shout your blessing. Read that word and declare it on your life. I'm blessed. Try it right quick. I'm blessed. I'm, blessed. I'm better than blessed. I'm, better than I'm phenomenally blessed. I'm phenomenally In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Turn with me to a familiar passage of scripture, the gospel according to St. John, chapter 20. Gospel of St. John will be our focus for today. Amen. There's no new gospel, as I say it all the time, every year. There's no new gospel, no new story. It's the same story. We, read, we tell it again to remind us of who we are and whose we are and what the Lord has done for us. Uh, chapter 20, and we'll begin at verse 24. Amen. St. John, chapter 20, the gospel according to St. John, uh, chapter 20, and beginning at verse 24. Listen for the word of the Lord. Are you there? Praise God. Word of God says, Now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have found the Lord. We've seen the Lord. So he said to them, Lest I see his hands, the prints of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hand. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Verse 28, Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me and have believed, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I, I don't wanna, just want to preach a simple word today. I want to talk about Jesus, Amen. the resurrected Lord. Amen. Amen. Take somebody by the hand tell them, Jesus, Jesus. the resurrected Lord. Jesus. Tell somebody on the other side, Jesus, Jesus. the resurrected Jesus. Lord. Lord. Amen. Praise God. I want to hear about to know him today. Oh, praise this God. Praise this holy name. Well, thanks of God today. We gather in worship as part of a global concert of worship and praise with others around the world as we celebrate what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ. On Friday in Jerusalem, there the, the church, the Christians marched through the, uh, the path that Jesus went when he was crucified, when he was tried, all the way to Calvary. They followed the path that Jesus went in order to celebrate what the Lord has done for us and the world. And so as we gather today, we celebrate around the world with those who are in concert declaring that he is alive. We celebrate his death. We celebrate his burial. We celebrate his resurrection. And uh, today, and not only today, but every day ought to be a celebration for believers. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, every day, every day. It is a day of celebration. For believers, amen. We don't just wait till Sunday morning. We don't just wait till Easter. We don't just wait till special occasions. But every day when you are a child of God and you know what the Lord has done for you, you look back on the landscape of your own life and you see the mess, the mistakes, the mishap, the mayhem, the hell you went through. You can't help but to tell the Lord, thank you for loving me. So somebody said it this way, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and not just one thing, not just two things, but all Come on now, he's done for me. My soul, my soul, that, that my soul cries out hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I want to do a heaven and save folks today. See, when you're saved, you don't have to wait on the organ. You don't have to wait on the praise team. You don't have to wait on nobody to pump you up, but you just start having some personal flashback. You have some time with God. You allow your mind to look back on the landscape of your life and understand if it had not been for the Lord loving me, forgiving me, restoring me, I don't know where I'd be. So, so I'm just here to celebrate, amen? Tell, tell your neighbor, I'm here to celebrate. I'm, 
I'm here to celebrate. I'm here to celebrate. So, so, so today, as believers, we can stand unapologetically. We can stand unashamedly. We, we can stand uncompromisingly, unequivocally. We can declare, I believe. I want to do a heaven of real believers. And I, I, I be, Rick, I believe. I, I believe. I believe. I, I believe. Now, some folks got to have, you know, this show me faith. They got to see the, the facts, the figures. You know, they got to have the biomolecular uh, fact. They got to have the CSI fact. But I, I, I wasn't there. I wasn't there, style. I, I just believe. I believe. Are oh, y'all with me here? And because he got up, we, as Christians, we, we got to continue to teach. We got to continue to preach. We got to continue to practice. We got to continue to celebrate by telling the story of Jesus' passion but also his resurrected praise. In fact, that's the great commission Jesus gave us over in Matthew chapter 28 when he said, go ye therefore into all the world and what make disciples. But he said, teaching them to what observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And then he lets us know, listen, I'm not going to leave you by yourself, but lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I'm coming to my text, but let me just highlight a few things. I was reading the other day, I ran across a brief uh, a note about the resurrection, and we need to remember that. Uh, the resurrection, the, the, the author said, the resurrection of Christ is the doctrine of every Christian believer. It is the faith of every true Christian. It's the courage of every Christian martyr. It's the theme of every sermon and the power of every evangelist. Did you get that? It is the doctrine of every Christian believer. How many Christian believers we got here? That ought to be your teaching. That ought to be your doctrine. It is the courage of every Christian martyr. You can't die unless you believe. You can't, you can't suffer for Christ unless you truly believe. Those who suffered for Christ had to have courage to know that he died for them and therefore they're willing to die for him. It is the theme of every sermon. Every sermon ought to point somebody to the cross. To the cross. Hello, hello somebody. Amen. It is the power of every evangelist. So we don't operate in our own power, but it is the power of every evangelist. And I would, I would even add that, that the resurrection is the hope to hopeless, hurting world on their way to hell in need of heavenly help. It's the hope of every hopeless and hurting of a hurting world in, 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 on his way to hell in need of a heavenly help. And Jesus is that help. Because the Bible says in John 14, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one even comes to the Father except by me. Are y'all with me today? And, and so as we look at the story of Gospel of John, let's go there. Gospel of John. Gospel of John, one of the good Gospels that records the life, the experiences of Jesus John tells us of several post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, and he gives us that uh, some encounters that people had that give proof of the resurrection. The first thing we want to look at is the empty tomb. Somebody shout the empty tomb. These are four points of power I want to lift up. I'm going to come to Thomas, but I want to look at uh, the, the experiences in John chapter four, 20 because John helps us understand that several things were going on uh, the morning Jesus got up. Oh, praise his holy name. The first thing we see, we see is the empty tomb. Somebody shout again, the empty tomb. The experience of the empty tomb. The Bible says in verse number one, go to cha John chapter one, John chapter 20, verse one. John 20, verse one. John 20, verse number one. Let's look there very quickly, very quickly. The Bible says, now on the what? First day of the week, a most unlikely candidate goes to the tomb. But this girl had a whole lot to tell God thank you for. Because this is the same Mary that Jesus had cast out seven demons. Now all those others who had received blessing, the miracle, uh, they could have been there, but they weren't there. So we got to give some kudos to Mary. Can I get a witness here? Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. When did she go? She went early. And the Bible says it was wild. It was still dark. Amen. She went before sunrise. And the Bible says when she saw that the tomb or the stone had been taken away from the tomb. And the Bible says in verse number two, she ran, came to Simon Peter, and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Whether this was John or, 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 or James, we don't know. We just said whom he loved. All right? 
And then she said to them, she said to them, what? They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb. And we don't know where they've laid him. Well, Peter, therefore, went out and, and the other disciple uh, going with him, going to the tomb. The Bible said they both ran and the other disciple outran Peter. Came to the tomb. He stooping down, looked in. Amen. Saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he didn't go in, the other disciple. But the Bible says in verse 6, then Peter, Simon, came following, went in to the tomb, saw the linen clothes that were lying there. First of all, the, the stone is rolled away. All right. Secondly, yeah, they see the linen cloth lying there. Th there's an empty tomb. Another evidence, verse 7, that the handkerchief that had been Oh, oh, around his head. This was called a handkerchief, a head scarf. Not lying with the linen cloth, but it was folded together in his place. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in. He saw and believed Mary's report that he, the tomb is empty. He's not there. The, the, the handkerchief is there. The, the cloth is there. The, 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 the tomb is testifying that he's not here. Can I get a witness here? The Bible says, verse number 9, as yet, uh, verse number 9 says, uh, uh, for as yet they did not know the scripture or had not believed that he must, what, rise again from the dead. Uh, then the disciples went away to their home. So the first evidence we've got that he's not, he's, a, he's risen is the tomb. Somebody shout, the tomb testify. <laughs> Hallelujah. But look at the next section. The next experience we see is Mary Magdalene, Mary's testimony. Look at verse 11. I'm still in the text. Look at verse 11. Verse 11, the Bible says, but Mary stood outside the tomb. Now, cast this. 10 says the disciples went home, but Mary hung around, stood outside the tomb, weeping. As she went and she stooped down and looked into the tomb, as if to say, I'm looking again. Verse 12, and this time, now, she sees two angels. So her testimony coincides that with the tomb, that not only is the tomb empty, but there are some angels now who appear in the tomb while, while dressed in white, sitting, one on the one side, one where his feet was, one where his head was, where Jesus had lain. Verse 13 says, then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said, because they've taken my law. And I don't know where they've laid him. They say, no one has said anything. They've taken him, and I don't know where they've laid him. The Bible says, now when she had said this, now notice you got two angels, right? The Bible says she turned around and saw Jesus. Oh, praise his holy name. Jesus appeared. Now, the tomb was empty. And nobody was in there when Peter and, and, and the other disciple came in. But now, because Mary hung around, sometimes it pays to stay a little while. Sometimes God will reveal some stuff that you didn't see. You, you get in too big of a hurry, you, you know, on your clock. But sometimes God will show you if you, ha if you hang around, if you tarry, if you wait. Hallelujah. Bible says she turned. She saw Jesus standing there and, 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 and the Bible said did not know it was Jesus uh -huh. till Jesus said to her, woman, uh -huh. why are you crying? Why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? She supposed him to be the God and said to him, sir, if you have taken him away, just let me know. I'll, uh, let me know where you live. I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, at the recognition of his name, of, her, of her, his voice, Jesus just said, Mary. Mm, had to be a powerful experience. Mary. She returned. She turned and said to him, Rabonia, which is to say, teacher. The Bible said, Jesus said to her, first of all, don't cling to me. I have not yet ascended to my father, uh, but go tell my brother." He didn't just say, go tell my disciples. He said, go tell my brother. He, he called them brethren. And say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. 
Go tell them I'm ascending. Now, this was not the ascension. The ascension didn't come until 40 days later. But he said, I'm ascending. Which means I'm positioning myself to check out. I'm, I'm positioning myself to go back to where I was. I'm positioning myself to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going back to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come and receive you to myself. I'm ascending. Jesus is always talking in the present future. He's always letting them know, listen, if I say I'm doing something, I'm going to do something, he speaks it as if it's already done. Y'all don't hear me today. Therefore, when Jesus tells you something, you got to believe it. If God says you're healed, you got to declare, I'm healed. Well, it hadn't manifested yet, but I'm declaring it before tomorrow. I, I, if he tells you blessed, you don't wait till you see the manifestation of the blessing. You praise him because I'm blessed. Just shout it in the atmosphere, I'm blessed. Yeah, I'm saved, but I don't feel saved. Yeah, it ain't about your feeling. It's about the fact that Jesus has said you're already saved. Yeah. I'm delivered. Well, I don't feel delivered. Well, I'm already delivered. Yeah. And you got to begin to speak that on your own house and on your own family. you got to speak in the present as if it's already done. I wish you looked down your room and shout, it's already done. That, that's why you got to go. You got to know it's already done. Just tell somebody else it's already done. Already done. That's how as believers, we got to act like we're blessed. We got to talk like we're blessed. You know, you, you're going through. Yeah, I, that's what I know. I'm going through. Because I see the other side of through. I, God has already said he's already brought me out. He's already, he's my deliverer. So, so why have a pity party when I'm in the pit? I might as well learn how to praise it. Because if he can trust me in the pit, he can trust me on the other side of truth. I can't get no help in here. And when you come out, when somebody asks you, how did you get up? You can tell them it was the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. He said, I'm ascending. Verse, verse 18, Mary, Mary came and told the disciples, verse 18, that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things. To her, and I'm sure Peter and, and, and the other disciple had some questions. Well, how is it that you saw him? We was at the same tomb. How is it that you saw some angels? We saw the same tomb. There were no angels in that tomb. The, the tomb was empty. We saw the linen. We saw the, the, the handkerchief, but, but we didn't see anybody. Now you're telling us you saw not only two angels, but now you're saying you saw the Lord. And he's saying he is ascending. I'm sure they had to raise some question of doubt in their mind, but I'm sure the way she told it, she had to be convincing. Because they knew the woman's story. They knew she had had some demons. and they, Somebody might have thought, well, maybe she's having a little you know, demonic flashback of thinking, I don't know what she's talking out of her head. But, but the Bible says, and I'm not going to isolate the text, but the Bible said she told them what the Lord told her. So the first experience we see is the empty tomb. Somebody shout the empty tomb. The second experience we see is Mary Magdalene. Somebody shout Mary Magdalene. Mary. The third experience we see is the ten disciples. So let's go there. Let's look at the next experience. Verse 19, verse 19, verse 19. Are you there? The Bible says, then the same day at evening. Remember the former experience was in the morning. So this time is later that afternoon in, at evening beginning the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled. Notice, well, why were they assembled? They were scared. They were fearful. The Bible said they were gathered because of what? Fear of the Jews. If they killed Jesus, you know they could be next in line. That's what they're thinking. I mean, you know, they, they killed him, the Lord. They killed him. And all he had to do was stop heaven and earth. He could have stopped it, but he didn't. So they are fearful. And that's a natural response. Are you with me? The Bible said Jesus came and stood in the midst. And look at what he said. Peace. Be with you. First thing Jesus does is he calms the atmosphere. Boys gathered around, scared, questioning. I'm sure they had a whole lot of stuff going on in their mind. What happened? What we could have done differently? What we would have did? Peter got, you know, if I wouldn't have denied him, the other disciples, you know, dealing with some guilt thing. Yeah, we ran to everybody thinking, what happened to Judas, man? What, what happened to you? What happened to Jay? Jay just, I mean, look, he sold him out. We were all running, for all of us was just like that. We ate together, ate fish together, hung out together. We were on the boat together, saw the miracles together. And all that he went through, that joker sold him out. I'm sure that was a little mad. They were a little mad with him. They were a little mad with him. 
Come on, I need some real folks. And when you're tight, you know, somebody trade, you know, somebody say, yeah, you're going to be a little hot. Come on, yeah, that's going to seem like you so saying you, you don't get mad. Somebody sell you out 30 pieces of silver and then showed up and going to kiss you the night of your betrayal. What's up with that? I'd have been mad too. That, he, he done sold him out on the night. You know, he's, the night of his, he shows up at night, walked up to the Lord and kissed him like everything is all right. Where my gangster folks at? I got two for you. I got, I, 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 where my thugs at? I need two or three thugs. I got three. Okay, I got three. All right, I got four. All right, all right. Shows up and you going to kiss the Lord like that? Act like everything all right? See, some of them cussing folk would have been saying O-H oh, to the no. <laughs> oh, it's on. <laughs> they going through, they dealing with grief, they dealing with guilt, yeah. hideous, they dealing with fear, their emotions just going crazy. So Jesus come to the room and says, peace. 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 Isn't that just like Jesus? Yeah. You're going through a whole lot of emotional, mental, stuff going on in your mind and you tripping, you worried about stuff you can't handle. And he just says, peace. That's a good word. Peace. You can't handle it. Peace. That's what the Lord speaks to us in a crazy world when everything is chaotic. He calms our nerves. He calms our fears. He lets us know peace. Mom, Pastor, that's why folks look at you and they wonder, and you just seem like you're so happy, everything is good, and peaches and cream. They don't know, the, they don't know your storm, but, but they know Jesus is, they don't know Jesus is your peace. Yeah. See, when you got peace of the Lord in you, you go through some stuff and still be cool, calm, and collected. You still praise the Lord. Some folks go through stuff, and they say, I ain't going to church, because I, I don't think I need to be in church. I'm mad, I'm, I'm confused, I'm hurting, I'm grieving. No, the best place to be is when you can get with somebody else that can help you. Yeah. Jesus shows up. What did he say again? He says what? He. This verse 19 says, peace be with you. Verse 20, he gave them some evidence because he knew some of them had shown me faith. He, when he said this, verse 20, the Bible says, he did what? He showed them his hand. And then he said, look, check my side. Y'all remember when they, when, they, when they pierced me in the side to see if I was dead? He showed them the hand where the nails were, and then he showed them his side. The Bible says, then the disciples were glad. When? when they saw the Lord. But verse 21 says, so Jesus says to them again, he reiterates what he said. He says, peace to you. Catch that. Peace with you and peace to you. He said, then he gives them a commission. As the Father sent me, I'm sending you. And when he said this, the Bible says he breathed on them. And John said, John's gospel said, he gave him, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, see, that, that, that's what gives you peace right there when you, when you know the Lord has breathed on you. That's why we're going to tell the Lord, breathe on me, Lord. I, I want your breath. I want your ruach. I want your pneuma. I want your breath. I want your wind. I want your Holy Spirit. I want more. Uh, I want more of you. I want your power that gives peace in the midst of chaotic situations. Receive the Holy Spirit. Then he says in 23, he said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are what? Forgiven. And whoever you retain the sins of any, they are what? Retained. Well, we see, the, we see the experience of the empty tomb. We see the experience of Mary Magdalene. We see the experience of the 10. But let's go talk to Thomas. Let's go talk to Thomas. Thomas missed the meeting. Look at verse 24. The Bible says, now Thomas, called Didymus, or twin, one of the 12. Notice, verse 24, he was not at the meeting when Jesus came. Now, you know, we, give, we give Thomas a, a bad rap. We call Thomas, you know, down Thomas, and we, we call him, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, Thomas. He didn't have no faith, and, 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 you know, he's a twin. But, but there's some Thomas in all of us. Can I help somebody? Yeah, yeah that, that, we, we ought to be called Doubting Ben and Doubting Clem and we can put our own name there because there's some, there's some doubt in all of us. Hello, somebody. We act like we've always believed God. The truth is we had not always believed God. 
We hadn't always trusted God. We, we hadn't always done what he told us to do. We, we hadn't always obeyed God. We, we could be called Doubting Thomas, Lying, uh, uh, whoever, hello somebody, and all these other, we've done some stuff ourselves. Because we hadn't always had faith. And the truth be told, a whole lot of folks sitting in church don't have faith now. Faithless, fickle, and faking the faith. But let's talk to Thomas. Thomas, you wasn't there. What happened? The Bible says in verse 25. Let's look. It's verse 25. The Bible says in 25, Thomas wasn't there in 24. Uh, but 25 said the other disciples, therefore, said to him, look, T, we've seen the Lord. Thomas said, y'all lie. No, 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 don't, don't, don't tell me that. No, y'all lying. Huh? No. Yeah, yeah, we did. We saw him. No, 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 y'all, y'all, no, no, don't, don't come in with that. No, no. Peter, you know, y'all dealing with grief and guilt. Y'all lying. You, you have not seen the Lord. Yeah, 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 man, I'm telling you, we saw him. We saw his hand. We saw his side. We, we saw it all. And, and Mary said she saw him. She heard it. No. I, I, I can't get with that. No, no, no. You got to, you got to give me more uh, CSI convincing proof. I need some molecular biological evidence. Uh, look, look at what he said. Look, T Thomas said, look at 25. And, and, and y'all know y'all have been just like Thomas. Unless I see his hand the print of the nail, because I was there Friday, just like y'all were. Unless I, unless, he said, unless I see the nail, the hand of the print, and, and put my finger in the print. But not only that, but I got to put my hand in his side. I'm not going to believe y'all trumped up story. I'm not going to believe that's fake news. I ain't going to believe it. I'm going to get it on the way home. Verse 26. Verse 26. After eight days. 26 says what? After eight days. Now, other time, a week late. Took him a week to get to that point, but eight days. New beginning. The Bible says Thomas was with them. He missed the first meeting, but this time, he's at the meeting with them. Look at what happened. Jesus shows up. Doors are shut and locked. Stood in the midst. And he said the same thing he said to them in verse 21. In 19, he says, peace be with you. 21, he says, peace to you. But notice in 26, it says, peace be to you. 27, he went and goes directly to Thomas. Didn't waste no time, did he? Goes to Thomas. Said to Thomas, doubting Thomas, twin Thomas. One who said, unless I see for myself. What does he say? He's Thomas, you're talking all that conversation. Let, let, let's talk now. Let's talk. Reach your finger here. Look at my hands. Thomas, reach your hand here. P put it, put it, put it in my side. Don't be unbelieving, but believing. That's what the Lord is saying to us today. Don't be unbelieving. When you tell your neighbor and wake him up, tell him, don't be unbelieving. Don't be unbelieving. But believing. But believing. Don't be unbelieving. But believing. Thomas must have followed instruction. He had to touch his hand. There had to be some action for him to come to the resolution that uh, he shouted. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. 
my Lord and my God. We saw an empty tomb. We heard Mary's report. We heard the disciple, but Thomas shares his conversation. He shares his confession. What's his confession? My Lord and my God. That had to be his conversion. Because the next verse says, Jesus said to him. What did he say? Thomas, read, because you see me. You touch my hand. You touch my side. You had some convincing proof. You saw me firsthand. He said, he said, bless. Guess that. Read. Are those who have not seen and yet. He's talking to you. Tell your name, he's talking to you. Do you not know because we have not seen you were not there? I was not there, but we believe. And that, that, that's the joy of, of faith believers when we understand we weren't there, but we embrace the story. We believe the report, not, not only of the empty tomb, but of Mary and the disciples and others. We believe Thomas' report, but we believe him for ourselves. Why do you believe? Because the saint would say, I tried it for myself. Anybody here know you tried it for yourself? Anybody can testify, I know him. for I'm not just knowing about him. See, you can have head now. Because of what you've read, what you've heard. But when you have a personal relationship with Jesus and you know it for yourself, when somebody asks you, do you think the Lord is a Savior? You tell them, no, I know he's a Savior. You, do you think he's a healer? No, I know he's a healer. And you got to have some experience with him to know for yourself that you've tried it for yourself. And so you don't just believe in somebody else's report. But I tried it for myself. I wish you'd wake up somebody up and tell them I tried it for myself. I tried it. I know it for myself. I, I know he's a savior. I, I know he's a deliverer. I know he's a way maker. I know. I, I know he got up. How do you know he got up? Because he got up in my soul. And when the Lord lives in your soul, yeah, your soul is a witness. Your soul becomes the tomb that declares he's not in the tomb, but he's in my soul. Can I get a witness here? My soul is a witness. My soul is a witness that he got up. You can declare because he lived. Because he lived. Tell somebody because he lived. Some writer said I can face tomorrow, but because he lived, all my fear is gone. Because he lived, I know life is worth the living just because he lived. When somebody asks you, do you know him today? You ought to have a testimony, whether you're at the grocery store or whether you're working out at the Y, wherever you are. You're, you're on your job. You ought to ask, somebody asks you, do you know the Lord today? You ought to be able to testify, yes, I know him. I know him for myself. Well, who is he? He's my Lord. He's my God. He's my Savior. He's my deliverer. He's my healer. Who is he? He's the matchless son of God. Who is he? He's Calvary's lamb. Who is he? He's my help. He's my hope. He, he's my healer. Who is he? He's my Lord and my God. He, he's my everything. He's my way maker. He, he's my bread. He's my shepherd. He, he, he's my light. He, he's my salvation. Everything I need, uh, when I need him most, that's who he is. He's right here. He lives. He is the resurrected Lord. That's the report we have today. It ain't no new story. Tell your that's no new story. And we are reminding ourselves of the evidence. The tomb. Mary. The ten disciples. The gospel. Thomas report. But you tried it for yourself. And I wonder how many really, really, truly on this resurrection day, how many really know him? Jesus. I mean, y'all sitting casket ready today, but, but, but you, 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 some of y'all can't hear me. Just, but, 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 but I want to, I really want to know. You know, we come to church and we gather, we celebrate, we do a whole lot of things. 
Any of you have spent hours getting ready to get here? But I wonder, do you really know him? What's your testimony? Ask your neighbor, what's your testimony? What's your testimony? Everybody may have a different testimony. But you ought to have a testimony. When somebody asks you about Jesus, what could you tell them? What would you tell them? What do you tell them? Well, you're supposed to know. You're a deacon. Before you was a deacon. Before you was an evangelist. Before you was a preacher. Who is he? Who is he to you? Resurrection time is a time for us to reevaluate our personal life, our own testimony. We can go by what the word says, but you ought to know it for yourself. God is waiting on you to be the Mary. He's waiting on you to be the Peter. He's waiting on you to be the James, the John. He's waiting on you to be the empty tomb. He's waiting on you to be the Thomas. To tell them, I didn't believe either. But one day, I met him. I tried him. I know him. I love him. I celebrate him. So many people doubt him. But I can't live without him. Somebody said he's real. Come on, put those hands together. He's real. He's real. He's real. If you know he's real, I want you to stand on your feet very quickly. I want you to do something that Jesus told us to do over 2,000 years ago. Find somebody. And I want you to tell them one thing the Lord is to you. Come on, testify to your neighbor quickly. In fact, two things. Come on, tell them two things. Tell them two things. Two things. If you really know him, you ought to be excited about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you do you do you really? Come on now, you really? That's a cute little phrase. That, that, that's a cute little panic cake. But I want some real folk that know the Lord had to bring you out of some stuff, brought you out of some dead situation, some tombs. He brought some stuff out of you. Look at you now. You are living witness. You're living testimony. I wonder can you raise the roof for him because he got up for us. Can we open our mouth? Can we give God a real praise? Can we let the world know he's alive? He's alive! He's alive! Yes! Hallelujah. 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 If you don't know him today, he gave a simple plan. The word says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world that the world through him might be saved. He's come. He's given the plan. He's given an invitation. Paul even wrote, later wrote, said, the word is near you even in your mouth. What is that word? It's the word of faith that we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's all you got to believe. You don't have to have all the facts. You don't have to have all the details. But just say, Lord, you can get the sun up. I know you can get the S-O-N up. You can get the S-U-N. You can get the S-O-N up. I know you can. If you can get the S-U-N, if God can speak and create a universe, he's God. You got to believe this day, some things are happening in the global atmosphere. Things are happening. We, we got some crazy folks in making crazy decisions and leadership. We don't know what's going to happen. But I think the Lord is strategically trying to tell us as Christians, get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your pew just being cute Sunday morning, pretty Holly and pretty Peter. And get out and tell a dying world that Jesus is the answer. That he is soon to come again. 
and he's going to hold us accountable because we're going to say, you, yeah, we went to church. We went to early morning. We, got, we went to 6 o'clock, so praise God. But the question is, who have you told? That's the challenge. I'm through. Come on, come on, deacons, disciples, and, and counselors. But what, who have you told in the last seven days about Jesus? Who? Who have you witnessed to? The next eight days, I want to challenge you to tell your story. Ask somebody at the day, do you know him as your Lord? Do you know him as your Savior? You have not confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Now's a good time. You're not connected if you're not covered. If you're not in covenant with the church, you need a church home. We invite you to come. Or maybe you need to just reconnect. Sometimes we need to reconnect because we get disconnected. You're here. Now's a great time to say Lord, I surrender. I believe you are my Lord. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for this time of worship and celebration. Thank you for your word and the witness of your word. God, as we just revisited the story, remembering the empty tomb, remembering Mary's testimony, remember the testimony of the ten disciples, and remembering Thomas' story, his experience, his testimony. You said, bless are those who haven't seen but yet believe. God, we say thank you today. And God, as we come to this altar, we're not just praying for ourselves today. We're praying for others. We pray for those sisters who lost sisters this week. Sister Giles, Sister, Sister Johnson, Sister William, God. Sister, we thank you right now. And Sister William, we pray right now for their comfort, their strength, for those who are grieving. But God, we know there's some family members in our family that are unsaved. We've got friends that are unsaved. We've got some enemies. We've got some folk. We've got folk that we know that are unsaved. Our prayer today, our prayer at this altar is for the unsaved. God, we are praying that you convict them right now. Whether they're in the bed, whether they're in the sofa, whether they're at work, in the hospital, wherever they are, we lift them before you right now in the name of Jesus. We are praying, God, for the next eight days, next seven days, that you're going to save them. We're going to believe that we're going to hear testimony that our loved ones are, have given their life to Christ. And when we gather again, we'll celebrate that that son, that daughter, that spouse, that mother, that grandmother, that neighbor that didn't know you have yielded their life to Christ. And they will declare, like Thomas, my Lord and my God. We're believing it now for church members who are members of the church but don't know you, who've been part of the family for years but have not confessed you as their Lord. We're believing right now that when we leave this altar and before this day is over, we are hear testimonies that somebody got saved. In Jesus' name, we thank you for your healing. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for your breakthrough. Thank you for what you're doing in a problem, but we praise you for our salvation. You are Lord, and we praise you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, put a praise on that. Come on, put a praise on that. Hallelujah. He is risen from the dead. God, we pray. Hug somebody on the way back. Tell them I believe in God with you.